Good day, Mech Warriors, and welcome back to Battletech, but not as you know it. So, I've done a lot of videos on the video game of Battletech, but I've never covered the tabletop game. So I thought as a little bank holiday special video for you all, I'd show you the basics of the tabletop game of Battletech. So, I'm loaded into Tabletop Simulator. It's a Steam program. It's quite cheap. You can usually get it for £7.50 or your regional equivalent on sale from one of any number of places including the Humble Store, Fanatical, or even Steam itself during a sale. There is so much stuff on the workshop that you can't go wrong. You will find something you want to play with this game. And so here we are with a bunch of Battletech assets. Now, a lot of you who don't know what we're looking at here will be very confused. So I'm going to run you through the very basics and then a couple of turns of gameplay to get you to grips with how this works. However, as you can see at the top right hand corner, it would be very difficult to do this alone. So I have called in some reinforcements. Say hello. Hello. And introduce yourself. Oh God, <laughs> I'm Seth. I got dragged into this because I know nothing about this game and he figured he'd sacrifice me to the wolves. <laughs> I mean, to sacrifice is, is a bit harsh. Slightly. But, but you know... So, Battletech then. Much like a lot of your tabletop wargaming things, everything takes place on one of these. A very simple hex-based map. All of your combat happens here, everything interesting goes on on here. So the scenario I've got set up is pretty simple. Over here, I have four Inner Sphere mechs. Over here, I have four Clan mechs. One from each weight class in both. If this were a proper game, I would be about to get my ass roundly handed to me. However, we're not going to play it through to its completion. I'm only planning to do two turns. However, this mech in particular could probably clear the battlefield in two turns. But I digress. <laughs> it wouldn't survive if it did. So, let's start going through the basics then. So, I'm going to come over here to one of the clan sheets to do this. So, on here we have the very basics. We have a record sheet. Be familiar to anyone who's ever played any kind of RPG. It gives you all the information about one of your units. Each side has four units. And yes, I know it's unusual seeing the clans fight with four units. Just go with it. It makes things easier. So on each of these sheets, you've got some very basic information. You can see your movement points based on what type of movement you want to use. Again, if people have played the video game, this will make sense to a degree. You can walk, you can run or sprint, as it's called in the video game. Though sprinting is a little different. And you can jump. You can see the tonnage of a mech, its chassis type, so this is a mist lynx and its variant or configuration for the Clan Omnimex like this. A little bit of fluff stuff here, which tells you which faction's tech base this belongs to. So this is a Clan Mech, obviously. The year it went into production and the technology rules it uses. Moving on from there, we have the list of weapons and equipment. So every mech is to some degree armed. Even if it is the lowliest little Ost Scout with a single medium laser, it's still got something. Obviously, much like in the video games, uh, ballistic and missile weapon types require ammunition. And you have a very limited number of shots you can take with that weapon, signified over here by these ammo tokens. Now, these are not standard to a record sheet. These are tokens I've um, found and used from the Steam Workshop. You can see different types of weapons. The quantity is how many times it can fire per turn. So, for example, this Mist Lynx has an active probe, one Streak SRM-4 launcher, two machine guns, and an LRM-10 launcher. And if you look at the mech, you can just about see that. We have the LRMs on the left arm here, and the SRMs and machine guns on the right arm, which tallies up with what's on the sheet. Moving on then, we have the armor and structure diagrams. So, when your mech takes damage, if your mech takes damage, if you're silly enough to let it take damage, 
it will take points of damage equal to the damage of the weapon. So for example, the machine gun does two points of damage. If you got hit, you would fill in two of these dots on the part of the mech that got damaged. If you run out of armor, much like in the video game, you start taking structural damage. If a part takes full structural damage, it falls off. If a part take, if the center torso takes full structural damage, the mech is out of the fight. Likewise, if you lose both legs or the head, you kind of need those. Over here, we have critical locations. If you take a critical hit, which means you get hit in the structure, or the opponent rolls a certain number on the hit location table, or the to hit roll, actually, um, you then have a chance that one or more of these critical hit locations will be destroyed. Which ranges from not so bad if you get hit in the hand, to extremely bad if you get hit in an ammunition bin, because ammunition tends to, you know, explode. We don't want that. Now again, going back to the video game comparison, we have the heat table. So as your battle mechs do things, moving, shooting, that sort of thing, you generate heat. Lots of heat if you jump, very little heat if you walk, but firing weapons also adds to the number. And as you start to get more and more heat backed up, that you can't dissipate, you start getting some pretty serious negative effects. Up to the risk of shutting down your mech, or ammo explosions, all, all sorts of bad things. So that was a very quick primer on what to expect from this. So, shall we play some Battletech, Seth? Okay! Oh, actually, isn't I, I've never done this, so this this is going to be very uh, interesting. That's fine. You'll be fine. I have every faith in you. I trust that you can't mess this up. Because this is a practice fight. So, if we take a look at this sheet here, the sequence of play. A classic Battletech game consists of a series of turns. This is taken right from the source book, Total Warfare. During each turn, all units on the map have an opportunity to move and fire their weapons. Each turn consists of smaller segments of time, called phases. During each phase, players may take one type of action, such as movement or combat. The players execute the phases in a given order, specific actions, yada yada. Each turn includes the following phases in the following order. So, the first phase here is the initiative phase. Now this is very simple. We take our 2d6s. How can I pick them uh, up? Drag a box around them. Aha! And then you press R, however many times you want to, while you're not holding it. And roll. And the highest score goes first. So I rolled a 10. You rolled more than I did. Oh, sorry, the highest roll goes second. My bad. Move second, <laughs> shoot Damn. first. Ah, oh, bollocks. So. <laughs> it is up to you to move your mechs first. So if we get them set up into some rough starting positions, let's have yours. Hmm. I didn't think this through. Let me just shrink the map a little. So that we don't have to share space. Um... What are the lines on the map for? I forgot to ask earlier. Oh, those signify road segments. If you look on any hex where there's a white line, it says pavement under it. Oh. oh. So okay. it's just a terrain type. Now, for those who are experienced in this game at home, yes, there are special skid rule modifiers for pavement. We're going to be ignoring them for this because I'm showing off the basics. Oh, so is it like how in D&D, &D, flat ground, hills, mountains, things like that? How it changes your movement? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. That's kind of what I needed. All right. So, if we get all the mechs onto the edge of the starting area, I will do the same. Ah! Could you <laughs> not be drunk, please, little fire starter? 
Right, you, you know what? It's your... close enough. He wants none of your stuff today. He just does not want to be bothered. Well, the clans are here. I wouldn't want to fight either in these mechs. Nah, he knows it's the day before a bank holiday. He wants to be home and, <laughs> you know, I don't know, drinking and, you know, hanging with the guys. You know, he doesn't so, want to be here. So, our mechs are facing off across this open series of roads that exist for no apparent reason. Now, here's how these phases work. So, because I won initiative, Seth has to move a unit first. She could pick any of her units, and as long as the ratio is one to one, she moves a unit, I move a unit, she moves a unit, I move, you know, move a unit, and so on. When there's an unbalanced number of units, there's a different rule for that. You can go look that up in Total Warfare yourself, because I'm not going to be spending too much time on it now. So before you move a unit, uh, let me draw your attention to this table over here. If you turn to the left and come on over. Tell me when you're here on the attack modifiers table. There we go. I see your hand. So. The... Yes. So what you can see here is there are modifiers for various things. Now, the attacker, that is the mech that you would be moving here. You have a modifier for moving. So depending what type of movement you use, it is harder for you to hit your target. Okay? So okay. if you walk, you have to add a plus one when you attack your target. If you run, plus two. If you jump, plus three. But if you go down a little, the target has modifiers as well. The further you move, the harder you are to hit. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Basically, move far if you don't want to get shot. Oh, okay. I needed that clarification. Okay. Yes. That's... You're harder to hit the further you move. So, your mechs here, you have the light Mistlinks, the medium class Dragonfly, the heavy Timberwolf, and the assault Direwolf. So, pick which one you want to move first. Have no idea. Then pick Let's... which one looks prettiest. They all look hard. They're mechs. <laughs> I Let's... don't know. Some of them look quite pretty. And okay, the direwolf looks a bit like a death machine, but the rest look okay. <laughs> so right, we'll, we'll just start with the we'll just start with the links and we'll go. Okay. From there. So the mislinks, you have three op movement options. You can walk, you can run, or you can jump. Now, walking and running are basically the same. It costs one movement point to move one hex. It costs one movement point to turn one hex side, one facing. Okay? Facing is important because of where you can shoot. So if we take a look at this, the very upside down field of fire table. So let's say I put that there. And let's say your mech was here, okay? In the middle okay. of it. So anything in the uh, center of your mech, the center torso, could easily fire into this green range think that's correct yes it is anything in the left side of your mech can fire anywhere in the green or yellow right side anywhere in the green or blue and uh, some mechs have rear-facing weapons that can fire out of the bum out the yes okay. so basically uh, if you're looking straight at the mech you can probably hit it with most of your guns I don't think you have any rear-facing weapons because the clans aren't given shooting people in the ass. It's dishonorable. So, what you... are they Klingons? Not they're actually human, but you're not far off. So, if you remember what I said, the further you move, the harder you are to hit, but the harder it is for you to fire. So, what type of movement do you want to use? Walking, running, or jumping? I'll walk. Let's Okay, 
So I've you got to walk before I can run, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So you can move seven hexes. Do I have to move the seven hexes? You do not. You can move as many or as few as you like, up to seven. And I've just realized I'm missing some objects. So, one moment. Panic. Nah. I'm going to want some of those as well. This will make sense soon. So remember, one movement point to move forwards or backwards. You can do that as well, though not off the map. And one movement point to turn aside. So if I wanted to say move here, it would be one, two, well, three, four. Well, you're starting here. Yeah. So if, let's say you're facing that way. So where is you in, where you're wanting to move? I don't know, I was thinking like here... Okay, so like every hex is numbered, so hold your mouse over the hex you want to go to, and I'll show you the process you'd go through. So because you're starting here, which is the edge of the map, you can be facing whatever way you want. So we'd have you facing this way, it would be one, two, three, four, five. So you would still have two movement points if you wanted to use them. Nah. <laughs> or can, okay. it, can they be moved to a different mech or no okay. uh that the movement points show the engine rating of that particular mech okay. you can't use your engine to make another mech go faster so in this example you have moved one two three four hexes so we would grab a movement die to represent walking which is the green one and show a number four so what this would mean from this table here is that because you have moved three to four hexes, I would have a plus one d difficulty modifier to hit you. Because you have walked, you would have a plus one difficulty modifier when firing your weapons. So I'm... I'm getting penalized for walking? I... Yes, you get penalized for moving but you then gain the benefit of being harder to hit for moving. So it balances out. Okay, I think. So, <laughs> because you moved your light mech, I will do the same. My fire starter is going to run. It's going to run for all nine of its movement points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I would take a red movement die. So running, I would make it show 9. Now, moving 9 hexes, if we look at this table, means that I gain a plus 3 difficulty to hit modifier, and I take a plus 2 penalty when I'm firing. Okay? Okay, I think. Don't forget, ask questions as they come up. I I'm, I'm just not used to getting penalized for moving and getting bonuses towards doing things it's it's just awkward That's i mean all. if it's you a think learning process. if you think about it logically the more you move the harder you're going to find it to aim your weapons because you've got to imagine that everything in a turn of battletech is happening at the same time so simultaneously you are moving that and firing your weapons which is the next phase along I am moving this and firing my weapons at the same time as you're moving and firing your weapons. So these bonuses and penalties imagine that everything is happening at the same time. Okay. So, you it is your turn to move your next mech. So this one has already moved, so it has to be one of the other three. Oh, so I can't just like not move them. All right. Uh, not from where they are. You can just move them one hex to be on the map, but because they're off the map, you do have to move them. So as long as I move them at least one hex onto the map, it's fine. Yeah. Hypothetically. Though, the penalty for moving one hex and your maximum walking distance, for example, is exactly the same. Ooh, but the bonus goes up if you move further. 
So, who are you thinking of moving? Um, I will leave that one. I guess I'll just move down the line. I'll move the the Viper. Okay, so your Viper is an 8 to 12 8. You have 8 walking movement points, 12 running, and 8 jumping. Yeah, let's run for the hell of it. Let's see. Okay, so up to 12 points. So, 1, 2, 3... Actually, technically I would be facing the... Correct, it's oh. Q and E to rotate. Aha. So that would be one turn then, right? No, that doesn't count because you're off the map that's, still. That's, okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. I'm already writing this. Eleven. Yeah, we'll stop there. Just for... Uh, I'm not... Okay. Gonna... So, eleven. Set. No, that works. So, because you turned once, that means you moved 10 hexes, which you'll be glad to know is a big old bonus. Should you not give me the, the green die? Uh, you or ran. Oh, okay. Red is running, green is walking, blue is jumping. Okay, okay so in that spirit, I will use my medium mech. Mine is a 583. I will run as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight. So I ran for seven hexes. I ran. And it's your move again. Um, we're since these are off the map. Can I move them further? Yeah. Like if I want to, you move can move them like along down. the line. Yeah. So if I want to move this guy over here and walk him one, two, three, four. Okay, five? not quite. Um, not quite? No, because sure. so you need to start facing the correct way because you can only move forwards or backwards with a two-legged mech. Oh, for fuck's sake, really? <laughs> Yeah, they, they can't sidestep, sadly. Alright, so we'll face this way then. So, this mech is a 5-8-0, so you have 5 walking or 8 running movement points. 1... I'm already getting this. 2... I'm gonna turn that way. 3... 4... The and... 1 for turning. I so... did that one, I can uh, 5. One, two, turn, four, five. Four. Two, turn, three, four, five, right? Yes, and you would be facing that way. Because you had to turn here. So what you've done is one, two, three, four, five. Then let's back up one and turn you back that way. I'm not going to give you a blind spot to shoot at. Okay. I'm not giving you a blind spot to shoot at, I'm sorry. That's fine. Right, my heavy is a Warhammer. Aha, it's that Warhammer. Okay. So I'm going to do something fairly similar. Mine is a 4-6-0, so I can't move as far, so I'm going to run. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pew, pew, pew. Which means I moved five hexes. Oh, and you moved uh, three hexes. Oh, you walked. That is correct. Uh, you did. <laughs> and last, your dire wolf. This is a three no. five zero. It is, is very it slow. Better? It's slow because instead of a huge ass engine, it has huge ass weapons. I'm tempted to move this here just for shits and giggles. One, two, three, and... That would be facing that way. <laughs> Perfect. Keep it game. 
Now, bear in mind that its weapons arc is... That its front weapons arc is this all the way round to this. Okay. So, it can hit everything and mine on the map. <laughs> right now, Almost. from there. Well, that's only because oh. the Atlas isn't on the map yet. Well, I don't think... Um, I this don't is think yours. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> this is also <laughs> yours. So, pro tip to any Battletech beginners out there, you probably don't want to shoot your own mechs. It would be frowned upon. <laughs> it would also be laughed at, probably. Very much. Now... Thank you for reminding me that that's mine. <laughs> my Atlas is going to run. Mine is also a 350. One, two, three. Actually, it's just going to walk. This is going to end poorly. <laughs> That's going to end very poorly. Not necessarily, because you have this big bonus to your evasion. Oh, so I if you've played the video game, this is equivalent to your evasion pips, basically. Okay. So that is the ground movement phase complete. <laughs> so we can mark that, that one's done. That one's done. Phase 3, the aerospace movement phase, doesn't apply. We have no aerospace assets. Which means that we're on to the weapon attack phase. Now, because I won initiative, I declare my first attack. So, the way this works is you declare all of your attacks, again, one at a time, and then you execute your attacks. So... You do need to be careful when you're declaring your attacks because you can generate a lot of heat with your weapons that you maybe can't dissipate very easily. So it's always worth thinking about. So I'm going to go left to right here. So, my fire starter. Its nearest target, the direwolf, is four hexes away. Now, here we have the range table for the weapons. Most of my weapons will not reach that far. So the only option I really have is to fire my medium lasers at it. They will be firing at medium range, because medium range is up above 3 and up to 6 hexes. So, it would be my FS9, which is a fire starter, to the Direwolf DWF to medium laser. And that would be my first attack declared. So. Which of your mechs PPUs do you wish to declare firing with first? Uh, I have no idea. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't really affect anything, because like I said, all these attacks happen at the same I don't time. Know. At the same time, it's just... So if you want, you can just go left to right on the sheets like I did. Let me know if that's what you're doing. For I am not a mind reader. I'm trying to see if anything I have can... Well, can this if, anything? if we're looking at the mist links, yeah. you'll see that you do actually have a very long-range weapon in the long-range missiles. And your SRMs do actually have quite a long range on them. So, you would decide what you want to attack and you'd count how many hexes away it is. So, from the missed links, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hexes to the Shadowhawk, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hexes to the Firestarter. What about your Atlas up here? Can, can the links hit that? Okay, to the Atlas, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hexes. So, yes. However... I so, knew there was a however coming. these ranges. <laughs> at short range, there is a zero penalty to hit. Medium range has a plus two modifier. Long range has a plus four modifier. So, if you are firing at one of these two, which is seven hexes away, <laughs> that is perfect range on your LRMs. That is your short range, so there would be no penalty. And a plus two penalty on the streak four if you wanted to fire that. If you're firing at the Atlas, it would be medium range for the long range missiles. 
and it would be long range for the streaks. Oof. So essentially, it's entirely up to you. Because movement modifiers also come into play. These chaps here get a plus three modifier for their movement. This fellow only gets a plus one, which actually makes all three of these mechs equally easy to shoot. For the mislinks. Now, you had mentioned that the big boy over here the could, hypothet wolf. could hypothetically hit pretty much all this. Yes, yeah, so its frontal weapons arc is straight down that line, so it could hit any of my mechs. Could also technically hit one of mine. <laughs> well, yes, it could quite easily blow up your own Timberwolf. Again, d that that's a bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is definitely a bad. So, are you wanting to fire with that now? Part of me wants to say yes, just for science to see what happens. Cause I okay. Like to see what happens. So, let's get that over with then. So, which of these mechs do you want to aim at? Uh, Quick note for the viewers at home, there is a rule which lets you fire at multiple mechs. Again, I won't be covering that in this video. Feel free to look it up in your own time. Uh, so, the Atlas is 10 hexes away. The Firestarter is 4. The Shadowhawk is six. The Warhammer is eight. Mm. So, if you landed Hitch, you could probably absolutely decimate my Firestarter. I could, but knowing my luck, probably not. But you want to know something? R and Jesus might be on my side. Let's go for it. So... Now you need to decide what weapons you want to fire. Because as you can see here, you have a weapon heat of 72. You can only dissipate 44. Now you did also walk, so that's an extra point of heat. Which means if you fired absolutely everything on this chart, you would be at 29 points of heat after this round. But yeah, I'm not going that's a bad. That's not, that, that, no. Nah. Sorry, I swear it, by the way. I apologize. Uh, t what are you apologizing for? Swearing on my fucking channel. Yes, but it's your channel, not mine. <laughs> and? So, um, if you look here and see what generates the most heat, it is these four ER large lasers. They generate 12 points each. So the easiest way to shave heat off is to not fire some of those. I was originally thinking of probably the... the probably the pulse laser. I mean, that wouldn't blow me up yet. I mean... Okay, so all four pulse lasers would be 16 points. Do I you... have to fire all four of them? Uh, the thing is, you can dissipate 44 points... Oh, hey, wrong button. You can dissipate 44 points of heat. If you take one off for the movement, you can safely fire up to 43 points of heat and generate nothing on the heat scale. So you want to fire as much as you want to fire, as long as you bear in mind your heat curve. So you can take the risk, generate a bit of excess heat. You can fire up to what you can dissipate. It's entirely up to you. I would recommend firing up to what you can dissipate. Though I'm the one that's getting shot, so I may be biased. Uh, well, let's see what happens. Sure, why not? Let's see what happens. Okay, so, if you wanted to fire up to what you can dissipate... That would be... All four of your medium pulse lays... Okay, what are you firing at, first of all? 
One second. Ah. The uh da, 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 the fire starter. Okay. So that would be all four medium pulse lasers for sixteen points. You would then add in the two Ultra AC5s at one point each. So that takes you up to 18. Now, Ultra Autocannons can be fired in single shot or double shot mode. I'm not going to cover how the double shots work in this because it's an advanced rule. Again, look it up yourselves. So we're at 18 points now. And you want to keep it under 43, ideally. Yes. <laughs> so, from 18, you could fire two ER large lasers and be at 42, which is pretty ideal. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, two ERLL for ER large laser. ER standing for extended range. I'm a firing laser. And then it would be up to me. So, my... Let's see, my Warhammer is slightly offended by your Timberwolf. He thinks it looks ugly. The feeling's mutual. <laughs> the Timberwolf is eight hexes away, which means, again, I have range penalties up the wazoo. And the Warhammer is also quite famous for not being able to dissipate heat very well. So all I'm really willing to do here is Warhammer to Timberwolf to PPCs. PPCs are big lightning guns, basically. Shocking. And then we're back to you. Mm. So I just think we'll make it just one turn for this. I'm sorry, I'm such a pleb. No, not really. it's not that at all, don't worry. So, if we go for your next mech along the line, we would take your Timberwolf here. Which is here. Who would he want to fire at? Can he hit your Warhammer? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hexes. He definitely could. With a lot of weapons. So, at eight hexes, that puts you at medium range for your LRMs. Which would hurt like hell. Medium range for your pulse laser and your ER medium lasers, and short range for your large lasers. But, like the other mechs, weapon heat is above dissipation. Common feature of clan mechs. Rude. So, would you like to fire at my Warhammer? Can I fire. The, the, which was the short range? The, uh, the uh, large... short range is just the ER large lasers. That is 24 points of heat, which leaves you with 10 to play with before you generate anything. If you would like my recommendation, I will listen to your recommendation. I would fire the two ER large lasers and the two LRM 20s. Because even though they're at medium range, if they hit, they're going to hurt. It will generate... Are you feeling masochistic today? Is that what this is about? Sorry? Say that again? You're like, oh, this will hurt. And you're feeling a bit masochistic today? Is that what's going I'm on? I'm trying to be fair. Now, in the interest of fairness, this will generate three points of excess heat. But three points is not enough for a penalty to anything. So sometimes it is worth taking a tiny bit of heat just to ensure the ouch. All right, let's ensure the ouch. Okay. <laughs> there we go. And then I'll be back to me. So my Shadowhawk is seven hexes away from your Mistlink. Seven hexes is short range for my LRMs, medium range for my autocannon. 
Alternatively, it is six hexes away from the Dragonfly, the Viper, sorry, which is short range on both. So I think I'm going to go for that. And it's medium range for my other weapons, so I'm just going to fire everything. Which is fine, because the Shadowhawk has very little heat generation. There we go. And now it's on to you, so we'll probably be looking at your Viper next. Sorry, Vi I was... Hold on one second, I'm sneezing. <laughs> no. I... We're doing it live! Okay, there we go. No, I'm good. I'm good. I was able to mute for most of it. Okay. Like... So, the Viper is quite blessed among clan mechs. It can fire everything without overheating. Now, it needs to bear in mind its ranges. It is quite a short-ranged mech, with just medium pulse lasers, SRMs, and machine guns. It is three hexes away from my Atlas, that is by design, which means that it can fire both the pulse lasers and the SRM at short range. And if it wants to, the machine guns, it would be at long range with a plus four modifier, but it generates no heat. So, strongly recommended. So, all the things. yes, if this was me, that is exactly what I would do. I would fire all of the things. Which I believe is that. Ah, it's not a streak SRM launcher. Okay. And that leaves my Atlas to fire. Now, my Atlas is a big bad bruiser. Your Atlas isn't gonna lie. <laughs> oh god, this is gonna be worse. It's gonna be so bad. So, my Atlas, seeing that the Viper is trying to turn it into scrap metal, is going to respond in kind. And it will fire its autocannon 20, its SRM 6 launcher, room. and two medium lasers. So it's firing everything? <laughs> nope. Because the Atlas no. also has an long range missile 20 and lrm 20 launcher but you're inside its minimum range which means i would take a big penalty to hit combined yeah. with your movement that's pretty bad <laughs> and the atlas also has two medium lasers that fire out of its booty so obviously they're not firing because <laughs> you're not behind me that leaves you with the mist links or koshi if you prefer the little lady. So, at optimal, it could hit either of these mechs at the same amount of penalties. It can hit any of these three mechs. Now, if you were firing at the biggest threat, you would fire at the Atlas, or because your clan mechs may be the fire starter. Because the Firestarter has its name for a very, very good reason. It carries a bunch of flamers, and if it gets close enough to use them, it forces you to gain some heat. Uh, let's go with the Firestarter. Okay. So at seven hexes, I would recommend firing both your LRM-10 and your Streak SRM-4. Again, you don't have to worry about heat on this at all. Wonderful. Okay. The good thing about streak missile launchers, by the way, is if you miss, they don't fire at all, which means you don't generate heat and you don't use ammunition. Nice. Check that as a four tube launcher. It is. Okay. So all the attacks have been declared, and now it's time to resolve them. This is where the maths begins. Right. So, each mech has a pilot. A pilot has a gunnery skill and a piloting skill. Now, in an actual campaign, they would probably be a little different. We're using the default values here of gunnery 4, piloting 5. To show the average inner sphere pilot skills. Fans of the Battletech series will know, will understand that. So, 
you always start your calculations on the to hit with your skill. So, parting skill 4, I ran, which we know from this modifier table over here. Because I ran, that's plus 2, so that makes it 6. My target's movement, you moved 3 hexes, which is a plus 1 modifier. So that is 7. And being 4 hexes away, it's a medium range shot, which makes my to hit number 9. And then I roll once for each weapon. If I roll a 9, I score a hit. A 9 or above, rather, I score a hit. Below, I miss. So... My first laser misses, quite predictably. And my second laser, I rolled exactly a 9. Oh no, that's 10, my bad. So I hit. So, once you've done that, the next thing you roll is to determine the hit location. Then we look at this table. So first you check the firing arc. Now, I am firing into its front firing arc. Anything along... Uh, between this line and this line is the front arc. The side arc is anything from there back to there. And the same on the other side. And yeah, the back arc is the back. So it's front arc. It is one roll because only one laser hit. And I hit... I rolled a 7, so I hit you in the centre torso for 5 points of damage. Um. So, you would select the second button down on the left, which is the draw button. Wait, where am I? Huh? Top left of your screen, you've got some buttons. Click the one that looks like a pen. Okay. And then you would mark off 5 of these circles on the centre torso. 5? Yes. Because okay. you took 5 points of damage from my medium laser. Make sense? Uh, yeah, I, I think. Okay, so now it's your turn. Where the heck are they? Oh, there. So, so, your direwolf has a piloting skill of four. So we start at that. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. you walked, so that is plus one, makes it five. I moved nine hexes, which is plus three, which makes it an eight. And then you factor in range, which I believe it is short range on everything. Which means it is an 8 to hit with everything. But it isn't. It's not. Pulse lasers have a little special bonus, which makes it easier to hit with them. I don't have any pulse lasers. You have lots. <laughs> pulse lasers gain a minus 2 modifier. So, you need your first of four rolls are a six this table is awful for writing on and then eight for the others okay so how many rolls do i have to do eight because you're firing eight weapons ah. so the first four you're aiming for a six or higher so roll away right let them land okay so that's one hit Next. That's another hit. Next. That Not is a, a miss. And then select. There we go. And that is a hit. So, you've hit with three of the four pulse lasers. So that's good. Now you're looking for eights. Right. So, go ahead. That is a miss. That is a hit. It Carry is. on. Yeah. That is a hit. And that is a hit. I am in for a bad time. So in total, you hit with three pulse lasers, one auto cannon, and two large lasers. Okay? Okay. So, now we look at this column here for damage on each weapon. So, the immediate pulse laser does 7 points of damage to one location. <laughs> so, for each hit, you roll. Both die or one die? Both, and we compare it to the hit location table. So, you have rolled a 6. 
in the front arc, a six is the right torso. So my fire starter takes six points of damage to the right torso. And roll the next laser. Oh, it's seven points. I'm an idiot. What number have you rolled? I have no idea what that. The is. little star thing is six. Okay, so eight. Okay, so that is seven points of damage to the left torso. And one more of those. Four. Four is the right arm. So, you have penetrated the armor on my right arm. Which means you need to roll one more time for the critical hit chance. Nah. So, with a critical hit, if you roll an eight or a nine, you hit one location. A 10 or an 11, you hit two locations, and a 12, you hit three locations. So, there are five possible locations in my right arm. Roll 1d6 and get something between 1 and 5. Roll again. <laughs> Dude. It's not my Dude! <laughs> it's not my doing, I swear! <laughs> Oh my god. You, you can. Oh, come on. Now you're just fixing it. <laughs> come on. You can do it. I believe. <laughs> okay, there we go. So fun. Okay, on the five billionth attempt, we roll a five. A five hits a flamer. Uh oh. Which means that that flamer no longer works. Oh, In subsequent kind of terms, I cannot fire it. No, it doesn't explode. Nice try. <laughs> so, you still have three weapons left to hit with. So, roll the auto cannons. Five points of damage. What have you rolled? Five. Okay, five is the right leg. Five points of damage. And now it is the two large lasers which deal ten points of damage each. So, go ahead. Oh this is going to end poorly, isn't it? For me. Nine. Okay, nine is my left leg. Uh, you're going to need to roll a critical chance on that. Uh, that's one die that's or... That's both. Two. Both die? Seven. No critical. Damn. And roll again for the other ten damage. Six. Six, that is the right torso, so four points of armor left, which means we're into structure. I can just about tank that hit, but that is another critical roll for you. So, 2d6. Oh, sorry. Seven. <laughs> Once again, that is no critical. So, my fire starter hit you with a single laser. <laughs> you hit my fire starter and caused a lot of damage. You jerk. <laughs> I, I want to come out. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do it that way. That's I'm fine, trying that's fine. Trying I'm trying to, to get rid of these dogs. But it, it's oh, not dear happening. God. They're stuck. Wow. Okay. Wow. You're, 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 you're kind of. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit dinged up over here. This is to be expected. You shot a 35 ton mech with a 100 ton mech. Now, it's my Warhammer's turn to fire. So, piloting four, I ran, which makes it six. The range is medium, which makes it eight. Your movement is worth a plus one modifier, which means I'm looking for another pair of nines again. So here we go. Nope. And nope. So I miss with everything. On to your Timberwolf. What do I need? So, gunnery four. You walked, which makes it five. My movement makes it seven. So you need two sevens for the large lasers, I think. Let me check. Yep. Yeah. Two sevens for the large lasers, two nines for the missiles. So, go ahead. <laughs> Plus RNG. Okay, you rolled a 12. That is an automatic critical chance, as well as the damage. So roll the next one. That is a hit. 
And then two uh, nines. No. Your first miss. And your Both second miss. miss. Okay. <laughs> you still hit me quite hard for 20 points of damage, though. Oh God. So, <laughs> the damage is once again on the front arc. So, roll for your hit location. For the first one. Seven. Okay, one second as I'm maneuvering a token around. Seven is right in the guts, and because you rolled a 12 on that to hit roll, you get a critical chance. So go ahead. Is that one or two? I don't know. That remember. is both. No. Thank four. Christ for that. And then roll again for the other location. Um, uh, ten. <laughs> 10 is the left arm. Thankfully, I have plenty of armor there. Okay, on to my Shadow Hawk. So, my Shadow Hawk has a gunnery of 4. It ran, which is 6. Its target is 6 hexes away. I've really written these down in the wrong order. So. Yeah, six hexes away. So I'm at six for my movement, plus four for your movement, which makes it ten. So the SRM2 is at medium range, which is twelve. The LRM5 is one inside its minimum range, which makes it eleven. The AC5 is perfect, which makes it ten, and the medium laser is twelve. Same as the SRM. Oh. <laughs> Bless RNG! So... Miss. This will be an 11. Miss. This needs to be a 10. Hit. And this needs to be a 12. Miss. So I hit your Viper with a single AC5 shot. Now, the arc is front just. So your Viper takes 5 points of damage to its 6, which is right torso. So, yep, grab your pen. Where am I going? Ah. Mark it all up on the right torso's armor for five points. That's here. Right here? Correct. There we go. Nice and easy. Now, your Viper gets to fire at my Atlas. So, your Viper has a gunnery of four, like everything else. It ran, which is a plus two modifier. Note how you got a plus four for being shot, but only a plus two for shooting. This is why moving further is better. So yes, four plus two for running, that's six. My Atlas's movement is a plus one, so that's seven. So I need now, to roll seven or higher? No. No? Because okay. you're firing pulse lasers, which are a minus two. So they are fives. The SRM4 is a seven. The machine guns are at the longest of long ranges, which means they are 11s. Oh, bloody hell. So it's two fives, a seven, and, an ele and two 11s. Let's go. <laughs> Bless RNG. Six. Hit. Hit. Five. And a seven this time. Hit. Nope. And then two oh, 11s. Yeah, it's 11. yeah, right. No. Six. <laughs> and no. And no. So, the medium pulse laser does 7 points of damage, so roll for where it hits me. 8. 8 is the left torso. You'll notice the Atlas has vast amounts of armor. Roll for the other one. 5. 5 is the right leg. 7 points. Now, your SRMs are a little trickier. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, missiles require a roll on the cluster hit table. So you roll 2d6 to start with. So let's do that. Okay, you rolled a 4. So we come and look at this table over here. Okay, the one down here. Cluster hits. Uh, that, that, that was me accidentally rolling. Ignore that. GG. 
So you're firing an SRM4, which means it's uh, this column. At least it appeared right on the video. This column down here. And you rolled a four, which means two missiles hit. Okay. Now, with SRMs, each missile can hit a different location. And it's two points of damage per missile, so you roll twice for hit locations. Six. So there's six, which is the right torso for two points. And the other one? Three. Three, it was three. I which did, like... is right arm for two points. Let's do it there. And that was all she wrote for that one. And now, my Atlas. I'm going to require some serious luck here. So with gunnery... <laughs> gunnery 4, I walked, which makes it 5. Your movement is a plus 4 modifier, which makes it 9s. However, I'm an optimal range for all of my weapons. So I need 4 9s. Missed with it. the big auto cannon. Hit with my SRMs. Missed with the first laser. And missed with the second laser. So, my SRMs, I rolled a 4 on an SRM 6, which again... Oh no, this is 3 missiles. So, here we go three. for location. The first missile is a 4, so that's 2 points of damage to your Viper's right arm. Okay. okay, the next one is a six, so that is two points to your right torso. Two? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And the third one is seven, which is two points to your center torso. Here are you. <laughs> there we go. And now your missed links. So, firing at my fire starter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, at a range of seven, it is short for the LRM's medium for the streak. So, you walked with a gunnery of four, which makes it five. My movement is plus three, which is eight. So, you need a ten for your streak SRM four, and an eight for your long range missiles. So oh, roll away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Eight! <laughs> Damn it. Wrong way around. Yeah, I know. Oof, you hit with nothing. Yeah, now I you know. know how I feel. And that is the end of the weapon attack phase. Now, you'll notice that I surreptitiously popped a couple of pilot check counters onto the board. If a mech takes critical damage at a certain component, normally in the legs or the gyro, which is in the center torso, you have to make a piloting check. However, if you take more than 20 points of damage, you also have to make a piloting check because that's a lot of armor that just got blown off. So both of these mechs need to make a piloting check. If they fail it, they fall over. So both of them have a piloting skill of 5. There is, if we go to the piloting skill roll table here, you can see that this is the top right of the board. You can see that it is a plus one modifier for taking 20 points of damage, which means each mech needs to roll a six to stay on its feet. So, let's start with the Warhammer. The Warhammer rolls an eight and is fine. The Firestarter, however, also rolls a 9 and is seriously fine. Damn it. So, the next... The gods were in your favor. The next phase is the physical attack phase. Now, as should be fairly obvious here, you cannot make a physical attack if you are not in an adjacent X. You also yeah. cannot use a component that fired weapons to make a physical attack. So, a very short physical attack phase, because we can't do shit. Can't Which moves, do shit. 
moves us on to the heat phase. Oh god. So this is where we monitor the heat and ammo. So I'm going to run through my mechs quickly, and then we'll go through yours. Okay. So my fire starter fired two medium lasers. They generate three points of heat each. Heat each, yes, that's definitely what I was trying to say there. Cheap so that is six points of total heat, plus two for my mech running is eight. I can dissipate ten, so I generate no extra heat. And I didn't fire my machine gun, so there's no ammo change. My Shadowhawk only has a maximum weapon heat of 8, and it ran for 2 more points, which is 10. It dissipates 12. However, it used ammo for everything. So, I reduced the ammo counters on each of those to show that. The Warhammer, however. It fired 2 PPC blasts at 10 points each, which is 20, and it ran for 22. Dissipation is only 18, which means its heat scale goes up by 4. Thankfully, that's not enough to get a penalty, but it would be eventually if it kept going up like that. Didn't fire the SRMs on machine guns, so that's fine. Last but not least, my Atlas generates 7 points, plus 4, 3, and 3 for 17 points. It walked for another point, so that is 18. It dissipates 20, so that is fine. And I appear to have misplaced some... Aha, they're here, right. It also fired one volley from the LRMs, one from the AC-20, and one from the SRMs. So that's mine done, and then we're on to yours. So, your Miss Lynx and your Viper cannot possibly generate heat without taking serious damage, so it's just ammo for those boys. Yeah, so how do I Let's see? Uh, so the missed links, the SRMs did not achieve a lock, so they did not fire. The LRMs did fire, so we using these counters, right click on the counter, and it goes down by one. Right click? I just did it, so Oh. Okay. You do the next one. So next one. the Viper fired as I try and see it on my screen. It fired the SRMs and the machine guns twice, so you would right-click on the SRM once and the machine gun twice. There we go. Now, the Mad Cat did generate a little bit of heat. Your Timberwolf fired two ER large lasers and two LRM-20s. So that is 12, 24, 30, 36 points of heat. It also walked for an extra point, so that's 37. You dissipate 34 means you're on three points of heat. In addition, you used two volleys of ammunition from your LRM-20 pool. So you reduce them however you wish to. Whoops. There we go. Each of these counters corresponds to one ton of ammo, by the way. Which is important when you're calculating an ammo explosion. Because you know where the ammo has gone from. Last but not least, the Direwolf, the Daishi. This fired four medium pulse lasers at 16, the two ultra fives at to 18, plus 24 for the lasers makes it 42. It warped for 43, so it dissipates 44, so that's fine. Which means there's just ammo. It only fired two AC5 shots, so you lose two ammo total from those. Oops. And there we go. That is. A turn of Battletech complete. How did you find it? It's all right. You you kind of you kind of sold on me that it does get interesting, especially when I pretty much nearly blew the crap out of one of your. <laughs> yeah, you do have <laughs> trying to compensate slightly here. You do have highly advanced technology compared to my mechs, so I was never expecting to come out of this as the winner. Certainly, if the battle continued, you would kick my face in. I'm not golf. <laughs> I won't kick your face in. <laughs> you would definitely kick my face in. You would absolutely annihilate me. And I'd probably enjoy it, too. More than likely. <laughs> so, any questions? Any closing comments from you? I wouldn't mind trying this again down the road, maybe? Possibly? <laughs> Interesting. I may have caught one. So, Maybe, possibly. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying definite yet. I mean, come on. We've only been, you know, doing this for like 
an hour, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> not, you know, not counting the hour we spent before I hit record for pairing, of course. Yeah, that's when you were trying to sell me on actually doing the video. <laughs> True. So, you found it reasonably enjoyable? Reasonably. I mean, you know, this is... I'm still learning, so obviously... Um, things can change. Yes, change. of course. Um, you know, if, if this was actually a battle situation, I probably would probably have shit myself. Because, you know, I would have no idea what I was doing. I'm... Well, I'm I can tell you what you're me. doing. You're kicking my shit in. <laughs> you're wiping the floor <laughs> with me. But that that's just simply because you gave me the side that could probably do that. <laughs> well, yes. A little bit. A little bit. All right, then, folks. I think that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I've shown you the basics. As I said at the start, if you want to get involved... All of this stuff is available on the Steam Workshop. I will include a link to the Workshop content in the description. And also a link to Tabletop Simulator's store page if you are interested in picking it up and trying it for yourself with a friend. So, I hope you found this vaguely enjoyable and informative. If you have, feel free to leave me a comment or slap that subscribe button. But for now, I will allow my gracious video creation partner to say goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye.